So the first speaker of the day is Lisa. Lisa is a teacher. She's, she holds a master's degree in educational leadership, spanning 15 years of an experience in educating students with disabilities. Lisa has owned and operated multiple businesses, and she holds a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. So in short, in short she's pretty kick-ass. Right? <laughs> so yeah, please help me welcome Lisa to the stage. very foreign to me to see all of these people far away and stuck close because I like these proximity. But I'm going to use my notes. So thank you. All right, how's this mic? Good. Good? Mm -hmm. yeah. Good? All right. Fantastic. All right, so uh, thank you, Tracy. Tracy wanted me to come and talk to you about some of the challenges that I've been through, um, not just as a businesswoman or an educator, but also um, as a person, as a woman. And uh, I have many topics, and I've told this story a few times. It's a good story, it's an important story, and there's a lot of lessons in it, so I hope that you do draw some, some value out of it. So the art of optimizing adversity, what does that really mean? So I like, I like images to kind of you know, drive home the, the topic that I'm trying to get across. Nobody really wants adversity. Nobody loves adversity. Um, challenge is hard. Uh, for example, last month, I, I wound up with pneumonia. And I actually spent a month uh, not going into my office but working from home. And I have to tell you, Never once did I say, wow, this is just so convenient that I'm working from home every day. It, I didn't say that, nor did I ever once say, oh, it's so great that every time I cough, I almost pee my pants. Never once did that, those words escape my lips. Never happened. Um, but yes, you know, adversity happens to all of us. But regardless of how your adversity looks or my adversity looks, um, we all kind of have a similar feeling about whether or not we want it. And so um, my dad is a big fan of, uh, of Herman. I don't know if you ever remember Herman, but uh, this guy goes to the doctor and, he, and he's like, ah, oh, man, I don't know what this is. Um, the doctor says, ah, just relax. It's where he works. Um, regardless of how adversity strikes us, we don't want it to stay. So there are two schools of thought about adversity. Um, some people believe that adversity comes to us um, it's very orderly, and when we don't think positive or we do, when we don't act positive, adversity strikes. Um, other people think that adversity is kind of random. You know, it just happens to us, and if we're unlucky, you know, more adversity comes. I kind of believe that there's a combination of the two. Um, if you look at it mathematically, the more we do, the more adversity comes to us. For example, uh, how many of you have started a business? How many of you would like to start a business? Okay, so starting a business is a good thing, right? When we do it, it's good, it's positive. Is there a possibility that something could go wrong? Yeah. So the more we do toward that business, there is a chance that something could go wrong. Let's say your business grows and you hire people, right? Is that a good thing? Sure, right? Is it possible that you hire poorly? How many of you have ever hired poorly? I have two, I have two. So the more you try, you know, it's good that you get some help, but sometimes it doesn't work out. I'm a huge fan of Napoleon Hill. Uh, yes. Napoleon Hill has, says every adversity, every failure, every heartache carries with it the seed of an equal or greater benefit. I really truly believe in that. If I didn't believe in that, I think I probably would have quit a long time ago because I have gone through a few things in my life and I'm sure that you have too. If you're a sports fan, um, you could uh, consider the quote, I've missed 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games, uh, 26 times. I've been trusted to make the game winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over again in my life and that is why I succeed. Michael Jordan. So, this is me, broken. Uh, when I was 22, I had a, a workplace accident that left me one-handed. And it was challenging. 
So we all have this positive mindset about adversity, and yeah, I can get through it. But what happens when your life kind of throws a curveball at you? What happens when you face something that you don't think you can get through? Um, have you ever asked, why me? Or I'll I get through this? Or what happens when bad, when bad things happen to you, when people do bad things to you? Well, when I was 22, I was working on a construction site with my husband. Um, and I had this workplace accident that could have claimed my life. So it was my job to make sure that the fluids and the oils were all topped up on all the equipment. And one cold November day, I went out to my job and put on my mitts and my coveralls and my work boots, and I went out to do the job that I had done for almost a year already. Um, I went to check a specific machine, and I was looking for a latch, but the latch wasn't there. Instead, my hand found the fan. So if you could imagine a fan, the length, the, with blades the length of your arm, with a machine behind it that is faster than your car, more powerful than your car. And then just imagine somebody putting their foot on the gas pedal of your car and making that fan go faster and faster. So my hand was caught in the fan of a D8 cat. And if you're not sure what that is, here's a picture. In Tonka speak, it's the pusher. There was nothing that I could have done except brace my feet and fight back against the draw of the fan. And I won, you know, to some degree. I lost a little bit. Um, but I beat that thing. Um, and in the process, I learned a little bit about adversity, not just that day, but in the years to come. So I'm going to share some of those lessons with you. Because really, when it happened, and in the years that came, I actually assumed that well, since adversity had struck, I was done. It wasn't going to happen again, right? It's like this karmic paying it forward. Oh, you know what? I lost my hand. I suffered. Huh? I won to some degree. I moved on. Moved on. But the truth was, adversity doesn't stop necessarily as long as you keep living. So here's a few strategies through a few lessons that I learned. <clears throat> you know what? Shit's going to happen. It is, especially if you're living. Um, you can do it. You can get through it. You'll be stronger. And it is very, very true that regardless of what you go through, your thoughts will define your experience. So, how do we know this and deal with adversity and still live a happy and productive life? Well, I think... Um, Really, there are some specific skills and some strategies and some practices that you can make use of. I just want to, I want to, before I go on, does anybody recognize this woman? Yeah. Who remembers Jamie Summers, Wonder Woman? Oh, man. Well, when I was younger, I loved Jamie Summers. I loved her. I thought she was so amazing. So she was like this FBI agent. It was a television series. She was an FBI agent that almost lost her life in um, a skydiving accident. But her life was saved by advanced bionic technology. And then there was her counterpart, who remembers him? Steve Austin. Steve Austin. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Steve Austin, yeah, the $6 million man. Right? But, well, I mean, with inflation, he's probably worth about $3 billion or, I don't know, maybe the technology is not worth <laughs> anything anymore. But, um, but it seemed that once a season, Jamie or Steve would go get caught in quicksand. Now, I don't know how they always seem to find quicksand once a year, but one of them always found quicksand. And it didn't matter how strong, like their advanced bionic technology, they simply could not escape that quicksand without the aid of a rope or a vine or a stick or a friend to pull them out. Well, I like to think of ad adversity as the quicksand in life. And the vine or the rope is the resilience to help you to get out. This is a picture of me. This is one of my favorite pictures. Not because I look stunning. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite pictures of me. This was the last match 
to the very last world championship I ever attended. I was 45. I was waiting to fight a woman half my age. And I really love the picture because it really talks about some of the, or it really, um, I think, illustrates some of the strategies that I'm going to share with you. But it also reminds me of when I first started competing. I remember going to Mexico with Team Canada, and I, I was training with these younger women, and I remember them talking about the three Ps before they would go out in for their match. And I said, what? what are you talking about, the three Ps? And it was kind of like that response to the fear that they knew they had to go and fight. And does anybody here, um, besides Rosalind, is anybody else involved in a martial art? Okay, anybody um, uh, perform in any way? Okay, yeah, or, or go in front of an audience. You know that feeling before you do something that's a little bit fearful, and you get the butterflies a little and mm, well, my comrades, you know, my teammates, these women, they, were, they would talk about the three Ps before they would go in and fight. They said it was the feeling that you were gonna poop, puke, or pass out. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's what I'm feeling. Okay, okay. But there, was a, there were tools to kind of help you get through that. So even though you knew you were a little bit afraid, even though you knew it was going to be a challenge, you, you also knew it was normal. It's actually a normal human response to feel that fear and get through it anyway. So I took that and I said, well, there are actually three Ps to adversity. And it's really important to know them. So if you are going through something difficult and you're not really sure how to do it, sometimes you take it very personally. You're like, oh, how many of you have ever, ever done this? Oh, I'm so stupid, 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 right? When you do something wrong. Yeah, you take it personally, like you are bad at it. Or you think it's permanent, it's gonna last forever. How many of you have ever felt like that? Like there's, no, you know what, I'm just, this is never gonna get any better, I might as well give up, right? I've said that before. Or pervasive. Well, I suck at this, I probably suck at everything. I'm just gonna be my old self, I'm gonna sit on the couch and eat some Doritos and keep watching Wonder Woman. <laughs> If you don't get through these, if you can't combat these three Ps, the only thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna stay stuck in that adversity forever. They're lies, they're lies. Mm -hmm. So how do you get through the adversity? Resilience is the key. So here are the strategies. You need mindset, and I know a lot of people are, have already spoken about mindset today. You need courage. You need a strategy, like a firm strategy, ideas on how to do it when it's tough. You need the right team, and you need to practice resilience. Everybody know who this one is? Love my Angela. So for mindset, if you're always trying to be normal, you'll never know how amazing you can be. You have to believe, yes, you are amazing. When I had my accident, I really, I went from a wallflower to um, wanting to disappear even more because I didn't want people to see this. I didn't want to walk in a room and have people stare. And I remember when I was in um, Las Vegas with my uh, co-workers after my accident, I remember how many people would turn and gawk at me like I was some sort of a freak show. Uh, and it was really discouraging. Uh, because I just wanted to be anonymous. I didn't want people to notice me. Um, and what happened was, one day I finally thought, you know what, they're gonna notice me. I'm six feet tall. I have this you know, appendage that doesn't look normal. They're going to notice. I'm not gonna be able to hide anymore. I had to believe that I was something more than what I had previously. <coughs> believe first than achieve. Does anybody recognize this guy? No? This is Roger Bannister. Anybody? That's right. So Roger Bannister, um, it was uh, in 1964, he broke the four minute mile, but before 1964, it was believed impossible for the human body to go that fast. 
They thought it would be damaging to the muscles and the heart and the lungs. It just did not have the capacity. He believed he could do it, and there was no reason for him to believe that at all. And then he did it. And then, do you know what happened after that? All sorts of people were breaking that four-minute mile. So it really goes to say that the mindset that you have going into a process is so, so valuable. Um, now, the fastest, minute, uh, the fastest one mile is three minutes and 43 seconds. It's, it's held by a Moroccan, and I couldn't pronounce his name. <laughs> so believe first, then achieve. This is the beginning of a multi-million dollar company. So after my accident, my husband went back to work, and I went to university, and we were um, apart for a long time, and it was really, really difficult. Um, but one of the most difficult things was he was away, and I had to go to the dump to take our garbage because we lived in a, on an acreage. I had to go to, go to the dump. I had to go to the landfill and take our garbage away. And it was piling up, and it just was never happening. And my husband came home, and I'm like, can you please take the garbage to the dump? And so he went, and it was closed. And then he went back to work, and it piled up some more. Long story short, one time he came home, and I said, I need that garbage to be gone. So we went to the auction, and he bought that. Bought a garbage truck. And so every morning before I went to university, he was still working. I got up, and I went in that garbage truck, and I went and picked up our customers' garbage. Every morning, we didn't have that many customers, but we went, I went every morning, and uh, then I would come home and shower and change and run into the U of A, and, and that's how our company started. Before that, my husband said, you know what, I really believe that one day I'll be a millionaire. <laughs> he had no reason to believe that. I, I didn't necessarily believe it, I just was like, you know, picking up the garbage. Gradually and gradually, um, more and more customers came online. Five years ago, that company sold for $10 million. It started with one truck, an annoyed wife, and a belief that somebody could be a millionaire. Believe first, then achieve. Mindset is everything. I am a huge, huge fan of Malcolm Gladwell. Anybody else? Malcolm Gladwell, I love, I love his, I, I just bought his new book, I haven't started it yet. I love Malcolm Gladwell, he, he is very inspired, he's a great read. Um, and he talks about courage in his book called David and Goliath. And he says, courage is not something that you already have that makes you brave when the tough times start. Courage is what you earn when you've been through tough times and you discover they aren't so tough after all. And that is true. Some people um, have said to me, I don't know how you got through that. I don't know how you ever did that. I would have died if that happened, if I lost my limb. Well, well, yeah, you know, there were times I felt like dying. Um, but the reality was, it wasn't that bad. Yes, I had to learn to do a whole lot of things. I had to learn to write again, because I was right-handed. I had to learn to dress. Don't ask me about tying shoes. I actually was flexible enough to use my teeth for a while. Shape this armpit. I don't know. Any ideas? Really, really tough, right? So I had to relearn a lot of things. Um, but it wasn't as tough as I thought it would be. So how do you get from where I was, that broken Lisa, to this? This, was, this is another one of my favorites. I am so in the flow here. And my, my niece captured this picture at one of my events. It is so much fun to engage with people and to teach people. Um, but how do you get from that broken person to this? And that's the tough thing, because probably a lot, a lot of you are going, wow, well, you know, that's great. She's very inspiring. But you know, I have some real life issues that are a little bit tough for me to, to get there. Right? I, don't, I don't have a supportive husband that happened to just go away all the time and leave a heap of garbage. Right? I don't have that. Well, I can tell you, um, in uh, our mi Mindset Mastery group, we do some really hard work about making small de decisions and taking small steps. And they require huge amounts of courage. So I want 
want you to take a look at this. Now, you don't have to do this, but I want you to take a look at this assignment. So I want you to think of one change that you have been avoiding, but you know that's what needs to be done so that you can attract the life that you want. You don't have to write it down, but I would, I would suggest you think about doing this assignment. And I want you to ask yourself, how will it improve your life? And why is this change necessary? And then think about what will make it easier to do. Will it be having somebody on your side? Will it be um, having an advocate with you? Um, could it be jumping on and getting into it right away? Or is it something of gradual disclosure and smaller steps, chunking it down? If you look at some of those challenges and the real practical ways of dealing with them, I'm certain that you'll find the courage to get where you're going. So strategy. My question is, how are you handling adversity in your life? Um, if, you're, if you're doing this, chances are you're not going to get where you want to be. There are days, we all have these days, you know what, I'm just going to pull the covers up and I'm going to pretend this isn't happening. Um, those days happen to us all. And I'm going to share a little story in a bit about one of those days that I didn't have that opportunity. My mom, God bless her, she's still living, she's still bossy, um, she's a pragmatist. She was very, a uh, very firm believer that in order to get from point A to point B, you got to go straight, you got to just take that line C. The more you beat around the bush, the less chance you're going to reach your destination. So let's talk about strategy and stress. You might recognize this picture. Maybe Leslie will because um, she might have been privy to it on the news. One day, I was getting my kids ready for school and then I was going to go to work. And my husband called and said, you need to take the kids to your sister's house. And you need to put on all of your safety gear and go out to the highway. The highway of the hometown where we lived and where my kids went to school. He said, one of our trucks has been in an accident. Okay, you know what, that's a bit of a crisis. And then he said, I think someone died. Well, that was one of the most difficult days of my life. The first thing I thought of was, oh my goodness, do we know them? And imagine you have three children going to school in a local community school and a minivan <coughs> hit one of those trucks and there was children that your children knew. That was my first thought. So I took my children to my sister's house. I asked her, please don't turn on the radio or the television. And I went out to the highway. I consoled the driver. I conferred with the police. And, and in fact, two people had died. I tell you this not to share a sad story, but to impress upon you how important it is to have strategy before adversity strikes. You need to have something in place that you can fall upon because when it gets tough, you won't be thinking. You will be relying on your instinct and on that policy or that strategy that you've already put in place. So important. So we're gonna talk about some strategies. Um, now I, I created some of these, I used some of these, and I'm gonna share these with you. One of my favorite is worst case, best case. Yeah. When you're lying in bed and you're going through all the things that could have gone wrong or that might go wrong and you cannot get to sleep, that's fine. Consider the worst case, but then flip that coin over and think about the best case. Because I'm gonna tell you the truth. The chance of the worst case scenario actually happening are fairly slim, fairly slim. But the, the chance of the best case scenario are probably more possible. And you have more control over the best case scenario than you do the worst case scenario. So as long as that strategy is in place for the worst case scenario, when that truck crosses the highway and that 
that speeding minivan crashes into it. You need that strategy already in place, and then you have to close your eyes and go to sleep, right? Plan for the best case. Know that the worst case scenario is looked after. I talked about yesterday's uh, historical success. When you are, have that self-doubt going through your head and you're like, I don't know what I'm gonna do, how am I gonna get out of this, and the three Ps are like weighing you down, remember that you've been through tough stuff already. You can do hard things. You can. I know you can because you're here. How many of you are new to Canada, did not, uh, were not born in Canada? Raise your hand. That alone tells me you can do tough things. I can't imagine what it would take to move away from my home country and learn a new language and start a new life. Um, use the resources and the skills that you have to get through the tough stuff already and believe that you have what it takes to get through it. Rosalind spoke about finding a coach or mentor. It's really, really important that you find somebody who has been through this stuff before or you find somebody who knows the steps to go forward. You have somebody who's got your back and when you feel like you can't do it, you need to call that person up and say, I feel I'm drowning here. I don't know how I'm gonna get through this. Maintain balance. I'd like everybody to stand up here. I'm gonna do a little experiment. So I'd just like you to stand up where you're, where you're standing. If anybody has super high heels on, unless you like, uh, you know, are rocking the heels dance class, you might wanna <laughs> slip those off. Um, but I'm just going to do a little illustration. So I want you to just um, stand on one foot. Okay? If you can, I want you to stick that foot out in front of you. Yeah, stick it out. If you can lift it up a little, lift it up. That's great. Okay, now I want you to close your eyes and then cover your ears. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Okay, stop. How many of you feel like falling? Have a seat. <laughs> Some of you felt like falling. Okay, when you felt like falling, when you lost your balance, what did you do? Open Just your eyes. Open your eyes. Good. What else? Reach out. Reach out. Good. All right. So this is a little illustration. When you start to lose your balance in life, in business, don't block out the external stimulus. Make sure you can see and hear what's coming at you. And if all else fails, reach out. Reach out. There's always somebody to help you. Do what you love. If you are in business, you know this. Business is hard. Um, life is hard. Um, but in order to succeed at something, you have to be absolutely passionate about it. I, I talk about getting in the flow. And um, in some of my other sessions, I use the analogy of the Wayne Gretzky fist pump. You know, like you know when Wayne Gretzky makes an awesome shot. How many of you watched R Wayne Gretzky ever? Okay, so I grew up in the Wayne Gretzky era. Uh, era. I don't really watch hockey anymore. Wayne Gretzky kind of ruined it for me because he was cute. <laughs> and he was just so cool, right? But he would shoot a goal, he'd make a goal, and then he'd, he'd do this, mm, like this, hey? When you feel that, you know you're doing the right thing. You know you're, and if you don't, like, oh, yeah, oh, that was so awesome. <laughs> you don't feel that way. If you don't feel that way, you're doing the wrong thing. You will exhaust yourself. I feel that way right now. I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, Let's shift go. We have so much to deal with. I like to liken it to holding a handful of marbles. You can add marbles all you want, but what happens when your hands are full? You start to lose them, right? They start to fall, and you don't really get to choose which ones fall. So if you pick out the marbles that really somebody else can look after, you know you're doing the right thing. Let it go. You can't hold them all. And if you, if you do try, you know what happens? You end up dropping them all, you lose all your marbles. <laughs> yeah. um, I believe Tracy spoke of this as well. Make sure that when you're doing things, you are giving back 
to people that you care about or causes that matter to you. Make sure that you give back because it empowers you and it gives you the energy to keep going. And always, always be grateful. Those are, those are the strategies I have used to get through some of the toughest times of my life. And they work. They work. Not to just get through it, but to use it to make me stronger and more successful. Okay, I, I wonder, can I get a couple of volunteers? Maybe two? All right, Rosalind? <laughs> one more? Okay, come on up. Okay, maybe one more. Three. All right, that's the come on up. Asian, Asian person. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I got your feet. No, I don't know. Trust me. Well, I love Asian food and I love sushi, so I learned to eat with chopsticks. I learned because it's important. <laughs> I, I just can't eat it with a fork. Okay, so uh, so I want you to just take those. I'm going to take your garbage. Thank you. Just for the record, if you want really delicious sushi, um, it's sushi in Spruce Grove. is fantastic. So I want you to just take those. And I want you to try and break. Who feels strong? Are you strong? Yes. Okay. So, Rosalind, you're going to try and break two chopsticks. Everybody else is going to try and break one. Just one. Yeah. I'm strong. I'm strong. Okay. Yeah, one. Easily broken. Easily. Yeah. Easily broken. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll take those. Good. Okay. Cool. Okay. So, they're not as okay. useful. And no. No. Okay. So. Chopsticks can be broken fairly easily, can they not? Yeah. Now, here's a bundle of chopsticks. I would like you to try and break them. <laughs> I know them. Yeah. No? You could pass it to Roscoe. Oh, you could, probably. Oh, probably not. No. We don't do that in Krabi. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay, I know. I know this. Yeah. I can't. Unless I, unless I sort of separate them. If you them separate them a little, little then, that's I, right. then I can start doing well, it. Well, there is an Asian proverb that says, one chopstick is easily broken. Yes. Many yes. cannot be broken. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, ladies. Thank Give them a round of applause. So it's very important um, to make sure that you put the right team around you. So that's just an illustration of sure. teamwork. <laughs> So, how do you build that team? When I was 40, I started competing. I needed a good team around me because I was not as good as my competitors. You need people who are positive, supportive, knowledgeable. They need to walk the talk. If they just talk the talk, that's not the person for you. You need to make sure that your team members, when they're talking the talk, you know they've been through it and that they share your values. And be careful of the snakes. So um, Jamie Summers in one episode, she was in the quicksand and she reached out for what she thought was a rope, but it was a snake. I, I thought, okay, well that's a little bit scary, but the, the moral of the story is everything looks like a rope when you're struggling. Make sure that you get rid of those snakes off of your team. And finally, you need to practice. So this is a picture of me when I was in um, competition form. I, I don't look like that anymore. <laughs> uh, but I worked amazing. really hard. I practiced a lot. And as I said yesterday, they really kicked my butt. Um, and I made sure they were good. Um, it's really important that you do what you love. You get in the flow. You get out of your comfort zone. And you choose your words wisely. You use positive words about whatever it is that you're doing so that you can get through this adversity. Don't talk, oh, poor me. Oh, I'm gonna, oh I'll never get. No, okay, I have a plan. This should work. Let's try something else. Um, make sure you have a resilience tickle trunk. Music, nature, exercise, things that will help you get through it. And outwork and outlast. When it comes to resilience, you just have to have perseverance. 
<sighs> you can't be afraid to fail. Failing is the only way that you'll succeed, and that's LeBron James. So, to wrap up, these are the resilient strategies that you need to get through the mud pit. If you are stuck in the mud, it doesn't matter how strong you are, you need tools to get out. You need the right mindset, you need courage, you need strategy, you need team, and you need to practice. Even small steps are important ones. So, in closing, I'd just like to say, give everything but up. Thank you. I, uh, I hope you have an awesome day. I really appreciate your time. Um, yeah.